mm. perhaps to one. So then, yes, why don't we take advantage of Dr. Kumarji's presence and, and go ahead and perhaps you can introduce him to everyone. I will. And, uh, yeah. And then Dr. Kumar could come up and, and Dr. Sit. Kumar, you could come and sit up yeah. anywhere. I, I want to tell everyone that you're about to have a fantastic treat. And that's why if you sense that I was a little bit excited that we have Dr. Kumar, it's for very good reason. I'm going to talk while he's coming up and because I want to spend as much time that we'll have the joy of listening to him. Dr. Satish Kumar is a brilliant physician, as is his wife, wife from India. He's practicing medicine in the United Arab Emirates. And as a result of his desire to create an invincible United Arab Emirates, Marshi has made him the national leader of the United Arab Emirates. But <laughs> but I, I think for all of us, what we're gonna what we're going to come to see in a few minutes is a most remarkable man. And Dr. Kumar understood immediately what Raja Ram had done. At Maharishi's direction, Raja Ram had connected what was always connected but had been hidden, and that was that this entire physical universe is itself nothing other than Vade. And what Dr. Kumar has done is he's read and taken deep note of every part of Raja Ram's research. He can tell you almost every page by heart. And then he has taken and looked at how he could, on his own, just because he felt that this was so important, it was such a, such a tremendous paradigm change, to use that language, in understanding. And so on his own, he's been meticulously researching all these aspects of brain, the entire physiology, and its correlation to the Vade. And of course, what he's seen is, is just the further elaboration of what's, an of, of what's an endless elaboration, because the entire field of the manifest is ultimately and always intimately connected with its source and what it is, which is just consciousness, which is Vade. But what Dr. Kumar is going to show now and what he's going to focus on and in this time is, is taking this also to another level. And it's so beautiful because it correlates perfectly with what Maharshi's been telling us in terms of understanding the sequence of unfoldment of total knowledge. And that is we think in terms of Atma, and we think then in terms of Ved, and then we think in terms of physiology, and then we think in terms of Sharir, and then we think in terms of manifest. We think of the entire ever-expanding universe, Atma, Ved, Sharir, totality. And if that's the case, which of course it is the case, then what that has to mean is that we should be able to locate in the physiology of the universe, not just human physiology, the Ved. I mean, think about that for a minute. It's just a fantastic insight into what this whole universe is on the physical level. That just as this physical level of our own physiology is nothing other than Ved, is nothing other than consciousness, is Atma, that's it. Like that, the physiology of the world is nothing other than that in the ever-expanding galactic universe. Of course, that's all our growing experience in consciousness. But it's a beautiful delight to see it in terms of a rigorous scientific application. And so what Dr. Kumar has been doing is he had this insight coming from Raja Ram's discovery already that the physiology of the world, the map of the world, the globe, is itself nothing other than consciousness. And if that's so, it would be interesting to look at specific examples of the world and see how they relate to this. This work that he's done is going to be highly appreciated by all of us. And I think what's so commendable is, is that Marshi presents this, this eternal smorgasbord of delights of pure knowledge for us, this huge platter every day of total knowledge in every way. And it shows that one man by himself, listening to what Marshi is saying and paying careful attention, finds in that one area the totality of potential. It's the most wonderful thing that anybody anywhere in the United Arab Emirates or in Lebanon or in India, wherever in Ireland, 
sits and listens to MOU, reads Marashi's books, and has total knowledge available on the level of experience and on the level of intellectual understanding. So with that as an introduction, it's really a great delight to present <coughs> someone that I think you're going to remember always and say, I, I like that presentation. Let's hear that again. This is the great Dr. Satish Kumar. Jay Gurudev. <laughs> Jay Gurudev. With infinite gratitude to the Vedic tradition of masters and with so much reverence to our great Maharshi Ji, I just present this uh, research to this enlightened assembly of so many beautiful leaders from around the world. So we can keep showing in the video. From the first slide, here we have, as we all start, Jay Gurudev. It's beautiful discovery, totally inspired by the timeless knowledge of His Holiness Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And uh, through this one insight that I have been blessed to hear through the Maharishi channel, so many flow of uh, discoveries have come and all this I've just termed as world transforming discoveries in the series which Maharishi has been inspiring since so many years now. So here we are going to see the headings under which these discoveries can be classified. First is the sacred pilgrim sites of the world correlated with neurological centers in human nervous system. Specifically we have here the discovery of India as a Ved Bhumi Bharat through the scientific perspective of physiology an expression of Veda and Vedic literature. And uh, the focus will be in this presentation, ancient temples of India correlated with neurological centers and brain. So this discovery is totally dedicated to His Holiness Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And of course with the heartfelt and great thanks to Maharaja Neda Ram for his timeless discovery. It's so amazing the work that has unfolded before us with Maharshi Ji's guidance. Dr. Nader's, Maharaja Nader's Ram's discovery uh, for the discovery of human physiology to be an expression of Veda and Vedic literature, which has paved the way for this discovery of correlation between sacred pilgrim sites and the neurological centers in human nervous system. So in this voyage of so fascinating discoveries, we're just going to start with a quote from Vishnu Puran, which clearly says that Bharat is the best of the divisions of Jambu Dvipa because it is a land of works. The others are places of enjoyment alone. <laughs> and uh, physiologically, I'll be interpreting this uh, a little while from now. And we'll complete this. Is, it is only after many thousands of births and the aggregation of much merit that living beings are sometimes born in Bharat as men. So here, when this um, sentence says that it's a land of works, and in the perspective of uh, Maharaja Nader Ram's discovery that the whole Veda is actually reflected in our human physiology, we are very clear that in our whole body, what is that which controls the entire body is of course our brain. So from here, our discovery can start and we are just going to relate the geography, geography of Bharat 
with the brain. So because brain is the one that works and controls all other centers, this is just a small glimpse of the realities that we are going to have now. So that's a correlation between brain and Bharat. What is the basis? If you see this, the first thing that we take is always as Maharshi Ji says, the Vedic knowledge, which says, Rig Veda is at the basis of the physiology, or otherwise the geography of India. And the second great discovery that Maharaja Neda Ram has given us is Rig Veda is at the basis of the holistic functioning of the human physiology, that is the nervous system. So from these two points, we can get a simple inference or knowledge that we have Rig Veda, which is giving rise, as you can see, to the geography of Bharat. And we also have a clear understanding now that Rig Veda is also giving rise to human nervous system. So we have a very common basis in the unified field. And we can very beautifully and simply infer that Bharat and human nervous system have Rig Veda as their common basis. If so, if two are having a common basis, then it's quite natural that those two will be related also. Now we see the references for uh, these basic points that we have been uh, given with. So in one of the great books that Maharshi had written long back, uh, it said that the physical shape of India is a spiraling shape of Rig Veda. <coughs> the total potential of natural law has expressed itself in the shape of India. Rig Veda forms the physiology of India. Rig Veda gives a physiological structure to India. India represents the holistic structure of Rig Veda in which reside the Devas, the administrators of the universe. So this clarion call was clearly given by Maharshi Ji, and this was a great inspiration. And the discovery actually took place few years ago, and it was by the grace of Maharshi Channel I was so much connected to Maharshi Ji. And Maharshi often used to just tell that the whole of Devatas are present in Bharat. And along with Maharshi Ji, our present Maharaja Nedaram, they had so beautiful discussions <coughs> between Veda and physiology. And uh, Nedaram Ji used to say, all the Devatas are in the brain. So it was just a simple correlation that occurred. So the entire thing was given out in Maharshi channel long back when it started. And I just had to just correlate between those two words, beautiful, timeless words. So we also hear that the discovery of Veda and Vedic literature in human physiology, uh, which is a great reference which I had to uh, have. And here you find that the specific page which gives that Rig Veda is at the basis of the holistic functioning of the human physiology. So we know that uh, the whole holistic functioning of physiology is controlled by the human nervous system. And that's nothing but a reflection of Rig Veda, as Maharaja Neda Ram had clearly brought about. <coughs> so now here we are with the vision of Veda in Vishwa. So this is a superimposition analogy between the outline of Bharat and brain. Here you see the double lined outline, and that is the outline of ancient Bharat. Because Bharat is not as we see now the politically divided um, by humans, but the ancient Bharat has an exact shape of the brain. Here you find that the outline of the sagittal section, that means the brain cut through the middle and uh, into the left and right halves. If you see that, the shape of brain 
in the sagittal section and the shape of ancient undivided India is almost the same. So this is just a starting point from which we will be seeing further miraculous correlations in each and every part of India and brain. So you can again clearly see that the outline map of ancient Bharat and the outline of sagittal section of the brain which is inside is just the same. So what is the work that we have got to do with this outline correlation? Next step is nothing but the correlation of the cosmic bodies, the sacred pilgrim sites in the geography of Earth and the neurological centers in the human nervous system. What they say nowadays is a, a new field they bring about. It's called archaeastronomy. So there is a divine correlation, a very precise correlation between the various heavenly bodies in the cosmos and certain specific sites in the geography of Earth. So these have been known since time immemorial with all the civilizations. This knowledge has been there. If you take the ancient uh, traditions, Mayan traditions, Egyptians, or the Islam, everywhere the emphasis has been given to certain specific geographical points. And here we can see a beautiful uh, correlation that the cosmos, uh, are the cosmic powers get concentrated in certain spots in the planet Earth. And these have been marked by various civilizations in different names like it could be temples, it could be mosques, or it could be certain uh, uh, spots geographically uh, marked like you see the stones, hedge stones, and um, pyramids. So all these have been having correlation with the cosmos. And when the brain, when our human physiology goes there in particular time, that's very important, particular astronomical conjunctions, then what happens is the enlivenment takes place. And also we have a very fascinating discovery, uh, an insight brought by Maharishi Ji, that the reverse also could be true. Like you can see, it's not only the cosmos influencing the earth and then the brain, but the brain, our collective consciousness, our prayers, our meditation, our rituals, can influence the whole cosmos. And that's what Maharishi Ji has always been telling India, or even our human brain is a cosmic switchboard from which you can operate the whole universe. So it's a beautiful reality now. We have here a simple way by which the Vedic pundits can thrill the whole cosmos. And that's the basis of Brahmananda Saraswati Nagars that we have been discussing <coughs> shortly. So it's really a beautiful vision unfolding itself and always as with Maharshi Ji's blessings. It's the science that follows the Vedas. The modern science follows and is able to see what the Vedic science has been telling eternally. So we have here the scientific explanation for the consolidation of world peace through Vedic Pandit's performance in India. So now we are going to just move into the basics of this discovery and how we are correlating this in a meaningful way. So we are here correlating the cosmic bodies with the left cerebral hemisphere and brainstem nuclei and the corresponding deities temples in the land of Bharat. So it's a very clear and open knowledge that the concept of left and right dominance in our human body has been uh, allotted to the feminine aspect and the masculine aspect. And this concept in Vedic terminology, we call it as Ardhanari Shura. So half we have the male Shiva and the other one is Parvati. So here we are seeing the figurative uh, description and uh, this concept is telling us the left part is always feminine. It's a Vedic knowledge that's well known. And so when we are going to take the cosmic bodies to correlate with planet Earth, then definitely we have got to take the left 
sagittal section. That's the left brain, left cerebral hemisphere, and the left uh, brain stem have to be correlated with the uh, cosmos and with the temples. So the basic thing is that the left cerebral hemisphere and brainstem is correlated with the geography of Bharat. This is because, as we told, the left half is the feminine aspect of nature. And thus to correlate temples on Earth, which is the feminine aspect of nature. We know that Earth, Mother Earth, and especially Ved Bhumi Bharat, we call the Mother India, is always uh, meaning the left aspect of the brain. And uh, also a small introduction is needed here regarding that the each Vedic deity uh, we have in India is traditionally associated with a cosmic body, that is a constellation of stars or a planet. So it's so easy now for us to go forward and uh, look at the wonderful correlations that is just setting in. So this is the very basic thing, the work of Maharaja Nader Ram, the amazing work. There is no amount of uh, description that can uh, thank this great work, which has totally shifted our understanding of Vedas. So here we see the right brainstem as Maharaja Nader Ram had correlated all the 27 nakshatras in the right brainstem. So all that I had to do was just take this into the other side, the left brainstem. So we saw it uh, in the computers. We see what's coming is a page from Maharaja Nader Ram's work, and then we just shift it as you see it spinning to be the left brainstem. And what you can see is now, this left brainstem, you can just imagine even before I show, is just nothing but the shape of South India. Okay, I'm going to show you, but before that you can just take a glimpse in your own awareness that what we are seeing, the brainstem, is just the South India part. The North India is, as you know, will be uh, represented by the entire cerebral cortex, the upper portion of the brain. So now in this beautiful association, the first thing that occurred was the constellation of Kartika. Kartika, as you know, the constellation is totally the constellation associated with Lord Subramanya or Lord Murga. So we have uh, here a beautiful understanding that Kartika Nakshatra is the birth star of Lord Subramanya. So we see that uh, very clearly that Lord Subramanya is having his traditional abode since time immemorial in Tamil Nadu. So we are going to, in this slide, see Tamil Nadu and Lord Subramanya's association since time immemorial revealed scientifically through the perspective of physiology and expression of Veda and Vedic literature. So you can see here that the Kartika Nakshatra is the third in the line of 27 Nakshatras. And you can see that number right in the bottom of the brain stem, three, number three. And uh, when you superimpose this photograph with in the photograph of the map of India, we can see that the Kartika Nakshatra is falling just over Tamil Nadu. And here, uh, all of you must be familiar, is the most famous six traditional abodes of Lord Subramanya. And Lord Subramanya, six temples, where we can easily understand that visiting these temples during particular <coughs> constellations can fire in the exact nakshatras correlated with Lord Subramanya in our brainstem. So this has been the timeless knowledge that the Indians have been following, especially the traditional people who go with the entire faith and uh, Shraddha. They go there and uh, they get exposed to these cosmic radiations that occur during specific festivals. So now we can understand the importance of festival dates, because that's the dates when all the cosmic forces are aligned 
with particular places in the geography of Earth. So with one more thing, I think we can uh, proceed with the uh, Ganapatis and then we'll take away. So also a deeper correlation of this Lord uh, Ka Subramanya, as represented by the Kartika Nakshatra, is here available. So this is the six components in the Kartika Nakshatra that you are seeing here. And these six components are approximately matching with the six temples when taken from the aerial view in the geography of Tamil Nadu. You can see the approximate uh, correlation of uh, the structure of uh, the six components of Kartika Nakshatra. And a little more extension of Maharaja Nader's Ramji's uh, work is about Lord Subramanya's other meanings inside. We have here the physiological meaning of Lord Subramanya's flag symbol, rooster. The Vedic lore behind it is that Lord Subramanya, a deva, that's the higher center in terms of physiology, fought against, defeated the demons, that's the asuras, or we can tell the lower centers in the nervous system, and usurped their flag and made it his. This is a traditional Vedic story concerning Lord Subramanya. So physiologically, we have Lord Subramanya, the lord of the anterior part of the lower brain stem. We saw in the last uh, slide that Lord Subramanya resides in the lower part of the brainstem. So he is a lord of the lower brainstem, can be conjectured to rule over the great intermediate net or the lower motor neurons which are present in the spinal cord. We know that uh, just below the brainstem we have the spinal cord. So we can just understand that the higher center always controls the lower center. It's a very simple reality which we all know. Usually the higher center controls or inhibits the lower center. So what is there for us to see is a description here of, this is just a picture of spinal cord. It's a cross section of spinal cord. All of you can, with a little foresight, also visualize the rooster there already sitting there. We are not done anything, but the outline of rooster is already there. And uh, we are just going to see it in a beautiful way. Just add these things. But uh, in fact, th there is no need to add this also. If you take a PET scanning or further refined scanning, we can find even this very much there already. And just imagine now cutting it further, and what we have is pure. Purely nothing, other, no other bird can be uh, correlated with except the rooster. So rooster is there in the spinal cord, and Lord Murga, Lord Subramanya, the uh, god of the lower brainstem fought over the lower centers or the demon kings down and usurped their symbol. Their symbol is nothing but what is written in the spinal cord. All the upward and downward nerves that flows across and forms this rexed layers, this uh, figure which is already there in the spinal cord as his own symbol. Well, we could do it that way because after lunch. Would that be all right? Maybe just show a few more things, and then I think we would break, and then continue afterwards. So we'll do it. Jai Jai Guru Dev. Jai Guru Dev. I had a, a glimpse of the glory <coughs> just in five minutes. It's very well known in India that there are seeds, there are shines of different devatas, all the five devatas, for one Vishnu, for one Shiva, for one Surya, Ganpati, Devi. There are places of pilgrimages. And what our dear doctor has expressed, The reason, what is the reason? And the second thing is that is, 
the days of pilgrimage are prescribed on this month of the year, on the day of the month, in this shrine, in this shrine, days of visits are over. And it, when the days of visits are over, we have heard the insight from the doctor. I was so happy to hear there is a reason, there is a reason that the human brain or human physiology or human heart and, <laughs> and human destiny is awakened on those days. They are the days of festivals. Every day in India is a festival day dedicated to this devata. And the reason must be, it's beyond our comprehension, it's beyond our intellect. And the reason must be that the human life is made lively in the quality of that devata on that day, on that shrine. This is Indian cal calendar. Indian calendar. On this month, you go to Badrinath. On this month, you go to this Devi temple here. They're all decided. And we had not thought what it was. It is taken to be a requirement of the people. On the Ekadashi day, you dip in the Ganges with Har Har Gange, Har Har Mahadev. In that month, you go to that shrine of Shiva and that of Vishnu and that of Surya. A beautiful insight of a scientist to find the reason why it is so in the culture of India. Why it is so? Hmm? There is a, an Indian calendar, Panchang. Indian calendar specifies this is the month for this. Hmm? One has to do this in this month in, in Gaya, in this month in, <laughs> in uh, Uttakashi, in this month in Rameshwaram. Days of pilgrimage are set and recorded by the pandits who bring out the calendar, Indian calendar of the year, and that shows if a child is born on this day according to Indian calendar, this is going to be his value, his value, his value, his value. All this huge field of knowledge was just indicated by the discovery of Raja Ram. And we are happy to have a, a thinker in the world, born in India, and got curious about this, 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 and he sorted out his thoughts in, in these 10 minutes, 20 minutes. We are on a point under the, under the guidance of Gurudev to experience that reality, and the reality can be known 
only by experience, intellectual understanding, is after the experience. So it's real understanding, is real experience, is real practical life in India, which is governed by silence. So it's our great proud privilege we are here all together. One body, one country, the world continent, one society, even though there are different, different cultures. German culture is different, French culture, Italian culture, this culture, that culture. They are all different, but they are unified in the word European culture, European knowledge, European understanding of the reality. So we, t we are going to decide in this, in this you know, multi-phased civilization of Europe, we are going to decide that uh, one of the resolutions is going to be how soon we are, we are able to create sufficient number of yogic flyers to create invincibility in every country, how soon, how soon. That will be one resolution. We are, we are sitting here to resolve all these resolutions in terms of schooling, in terms of those 12 ministries of Rajaranji, because he is spearing had the administration of silence in the world. So we take his advice and t based on his research work, absolutely valid, no doubt, of any, no aspect of it can ever be doubted because it's, it's coming on, it's coming on as a living reality in one part of the world, and that part of the world is called India. So it's very good. We are here in one day, two day. We are going to make resolution that human physiology has to be open to this total activity, motivated by total knowledge, where there is no duality, no friction, no lack of anything, perfection. We are going to create our world family on this level. So we will continue our program. This is the basic that our doctor has laid out. We thank him for coming and expressing himself. All glory to Gurudev, all glory to Gurudev, and all glory to Gurudev. Yay, Gurudev. Gurudev. <clears throat> so then, with great fulfillment that Dr. Satish Kumar has produced this amazing expression of total knowledge from Maharshi today. Maharshi inspired by his brilliant work in the light of Maharajaji's discovery and the expression of that in the reality of the geography of India and Maharshi's explanation to us of the fundamental nature of the reality of education from the level of total knowledge for every Indian child and how now by every nation transcending, every nation experiencing the self-referral field, the field of totality where no nations exist, all nations rising in unity and the whole world family unified. So it was really so great to hear these wonderful comments that Maharshi has directed to Dr. Kumar on the basis of his fantastic insights and his dedicated work to bring this discovery to the level of his experience 
as a citizen born in Ved Bhumi Bharat in the land of the Ved. And a great big cheer to Dr. Satish Kumar for his wonderful presentation and work. Jay Gurudev, welcome to Mahashi's Global Family Chat. This evening we're blessed to be with the Rajas Conference. Today is the fourth day of the Rajas Global Congress. And th today the Rajas viewed again the supremely profound discourse of yesterday from Mahashi in which Mahashi went deeply into the structure of administration from silence. And this evening we have a special guest and to introduce our special guest and welcome him, I call upon our dear Raja of India, Raja Harris, who has the world at his fingertips all the time. And so Raja Harris, please go ahead and invite our special guest this evening. Jay Gurudev. <coughs> Jay Gurudev, and thank you so much as always, Dr. Swan. It's a great joy to very briefly be part of a special presentation this evening, and that is to honor someone who's come and presented a level of fascinating and very profound knowledge. For all of us who had the great chance to marvel at that divine, life-changing understanding of life which Rajaram gave us with the blessings of Maharshi, it's been, it's been years now of growing to appreciate the significance of that, what it means to say, Atma, Ved, Sharir, Vishwa, Brahm. All of that in terms of that one reality, all located in the Ved. What does it mean to say that every grain of creation is itself infinity? And we marvel at Raja Ram's discovery. And in that regard, it was so absolutely delightful for us all during the wonderful conference of the national leaders of Europe to have had the chance to hear a presentation of someone who very carefully listened to what Maharaj had discovered. And he was so inspired that he couldn't stop himself thinking about it and thinking about it and wanting to have more of that experience of Pasha because he knew there was something more there that he wanted to discover. And this is the man that we're celebrating this evening, Dr. Satish Kumar. Dr. Kumar had the insight that I think many people in the world family had a chance to hear the other day in his presentation to that same assembly. It had to be the case that if in structure and function human physiology is nothing other than Ved, then the extension of that in the world had to also be the same. And he had the idea to look at that in terms of what's most eternal in the physical structure of the universe. And so he looked into the physiology of Ved Bhumi Bharat, the physiology of India. And he found the most fantastic things. He found that one could look at that physiology and see in the eternal temple sites exact one-to-one -one correlation with the devatas, exactly as Maharaj had done in the level of human physiology. And then he had the supreme good fortune in bringing this out 
to have Maharshi's detailed commentary on that and explain that pilgrimage sites in terms of times of year, d days in which they should be properly celebrated, and location, why this is there and this is that and what's done, to give a comprehensive understanding of the eternal structure of total knowledge lively in Satyug, and which will be the delightful joy and pilgrimage of everyone. Dr. Kumar came for, for two weeks and he's leaving tomorrow, but he leaves with all of us feeling that this was a really auspicious visit. His timing was auspicious for himself. Who could have imagined that he would come and immediately this assembly would start? And every day he'd be blessed by hearing the news of the world family and the blessings of Maharishi guiding everyone. Who would have thought that that type of beautiful, beautiful two weeks could possibly have occurred and it's passed by in a flash? But all of us are feeling with full hearts appreciation that this one man, he's a great doctor from India, who now is living in the United Arab Emirates. And he moved there for one reason, because he thought that one day it would be easier for him to come. It would only be halfway to coming to Maharshi's Ramastan than all the way from where he was living. And his power of intention, his power of devotion, his power of daily commitment to making Maharshi's knowledge lively to everyone is what brought him here for these two weeks. And Maharshi said again today to remind him that this is his home and that he should always feel to come here and that we'll all look out for him, that we all want him to always be part of this family in this way. I can't imagine that any one of us would want to hear news more glorious than that. So the final thing I wanted to say was, it was the request today of the Minister of Finance and Planning, Dr. Benjamin Feldman Kuberji, that we present you this beautiful golden <coughs> pin. These golden pins have been presented to honor those most outstanding leaders of the movement, to honor their enlightened leadership in the reign of Maharaj Nadaram. We had the chance to see the beautiful presentation to our dear, brilliant artist, Dr. Lynch. That was the first pin that was given out publicly. And you, Dr. Kumar, have the great honor of receiving now tonight the second pin. And I would like to kindly ask that the Raja of Central Vedic America, who is the Raja who has made sure that pundits are always lively for all of America, that he would present that pin to you and we'd like to ask you for your thoughts and reflections as you head back tomorrow. Thank you for coming. On behalf of the whole world, well done. Jay Gurudev. Thank you. Jay Gurudev, it's a dream come true and I'm without words to express my thanks, my heartfelt thanks to His Holiness Maharishi Mahesh Yogi who has just always led, he's my guru who has led me step by step and uh, it was so beautiful to know and uh, to experience, to see the complete knowledge present here before us in this was in the world was definitely in dark darkness some time back but we see the light unfolding so beautifully so powerfully so majestically and so simply also and uh, we all as uh, we know that 
we are all so much blessed to be in this time it's uh, it's a great blessing to be in this enlightened assembly of great rajas great ministers great leaders of uh, the world of the mankind and who else could have done this and even imagined this it's such a great um, joy and i am such a new person here and uh, a simple person i'm left with no words to express the great delight which every citizen should feel right away because we are in the safe hands of so many enlightened leaders and it's unbelievable it's just unbelievable and um, it's uh, all glory to the vedic tradition of masters who have done this who have planned it so meticulously so beautifully and all the while this is occurring and uh, people are getting the bliss <coughs> unaware it's again transcendent whatever is happening here and the my first trip to holland uh, was so much visualized since uh, years back when maharishi ji echoed all these discoveries through maharishi channel those were great times when our maharaja and maharishi ji used to have so many beautiful discussions going on for hours and hours and um, it was a joy to just take those beautiful messages and just put it together and uh, it it is such a field of infinite correlation that we call we we often hear the enlightened speakers from here speaking about this i was a witness to that now like after many times of trying to reach out and uh, as we know that time has to come for everything to mature so one of um, the times when i was seeing the marushi channel i saw our maharaja of invincible america dr john hagelin he was inviting people to contact at the global financial capital new york and he was telling we will respond immediately you re- you give the mail and uh, come out we'll come out with excellent programs to you and so i was so beautifully inspired to just send a mail about this discovery again and from there it started it was some 6 months back and then uh, i got reply from uh, mahara uh, from raja of invincible america and uh, uh, dr bevan morris ji and um, they uh, referred me to dr fred travis and uh, i mailed to him and from there uh, i got the chance to uh, present the research to dr keith wallace and uh, finally then a uh, master stroke and great luck occurred i was introduced to raja harris ji raja of india of the domain from where i came and it was so joyous to present the research to him and it's just after that uh, heaven on earth i was able to have and see so i thank all the persons involved here and not alone that it's uh, such an unbelievable um, occurrence in the world history so uh, right away i am so much inspired after coming here and seeing the great devotion of enlightened souls and i'm million times inspired to carry out whatever that is the most right for the human race and this discovery uh, has been so much blessed by our maharaja uh, ram ji uh, whose book opened some beautiful dimensions uh, in our experiences throughout the world expressing the whole veda and vedic literature in terms of physiology was something amazing which especially as doctors uh, many would deeply appreciate because it's an amazing correlation finding that all these uh, devatas and everything in the neurological uh, realities so with all this uh, <coughs> basic work that has been done and with all the knowledge that has been brought out about ayurveda about all the other aspects of veda i think we are in a very beautiful position in the world history to present this very authentically <coughs> to all parts of the world and the most important thing is in ram raj as we often hear no one should suffer and so definitely having a great series of great chain of medical colleges throughout the world will be a great work 
towards relieving the innocent people, those who are suffering, innocent because they don't know what's happening with them. The pace of life has gone out of uh, imagination. And so it's a great time that we bring this timeless knowledge that we have, that the moment is uh, proud to be just every day, it's just exponentially expanding. So this kind of knowledge can be and should be brought to the enlightened uh, members of the society, especially the would-be doctors, so that the doctors will administer their beautiful knowledge to the public who trust the doctors much. So it would be a great um, privilege for me to work for this kind of um, uh, setting up of a series of medical colleges in the place where uh, I belong presently and of course wherever is possible with the help of all the people, good uh, willing people of the world because the medical colleges are going to be fully Maharishis because he has, Maharishi has defined life, redefined Vedas and redefined total knowledge. It's such a beautiful time in this world that we should act immediately and I resolved personally after seeing this kind of intense devotion that is just oozing out everywhere. I'm just thrilled beyond words and I, all that I can say is I just want the blessings to go and make this a reality and have it as soon as possible because we see the people really suffering in the darkness. One side it is total ignorance and other side there is a lot of uh, value for only making a business especially and so we want to establish these kind of total knowledge based medical colleges that are going to give life to the millions of people who are suffering. So it's a great time and I, I'm just uh, without words to thank all of you here who have wonderfully supported all the great things that Maharishi has been giving to the world and after that when I came and spent these two weeks it just has been something unbelievable. So I really take this opportunity to thank from my heart Maharishi Ji, Maharaja and all the great leaders here. Jai Gurudev. Jai Gurudev. Jay Gurudev, it's beautifully said and the whole world is clapping for you. It's clapping for you personally for your level of understanding of the enormity of what Maharshi has been offering to the world for 50 years. And also it's clapping because you're going to be that man, that precious doctor who sets up in the seven Gulf nations medical colleges and hospitals that's going to bring perfect health and through that you Dr. Kumar are going to bring invincibility to the Gulf region and the Middle East. I think that it would take somebody like yourself who comes from the depth and the heart of India with a full passion and commitment as you have to do it. We listen very carefully all of us to your beautiful resolve you have all of our support. Let's talk every day. Let's do this great thing. Let's report. Invincibility has been created through your beautiful efforts. Welcome back to your home soon. Welcome back to this home soon. Jay Gurudev. Jay Gurudev.